the worst could be over. We've just seen at a meeting of the world elite what a joke the global warming movement has become. And this could be, at last, the beginning of the end of this dangerous religion. We've seen at the annual World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland, a deranged, hypocritical and elitist farce starring an hysterical global warming huckster, Al Gore, the fading young guru, Greta Thunberg, and the frankly bizarre John Kerry, US President Joe Biden's special envoy on climate. Thanks to this brilliant cast, the world can now see what, what a catastrophe uh, the global warming scare has become. And, you know, when people start laughing at you, and this is the thing here, when people start laughing at you, it's over. Now, this World Economic Forum each year brings in world leaders, billionaires, maybe now and then a, a rock star, and pet activists to discuss how to rule the world. It's true. Its leader, Klaus Schwab, has even written a book on how to do it called The Great Reset. Now, their big theme in recent years, their holy crusade, has been global warming. And back when she was just 16 and pretty new and fresh and, and cool, well, Thunberg was invited by Schwab to come tell the world to panic. I wanted to act as if the house was on fire. Now, when you start like that, panic, the house is on fire, it's a little bit hard to ratchet it up from there. I mean, where do you go? How do you top that kind of fear-mongering without looking absolutely nuts? Well, you can't. It does eventually catch up with you, and it caught up with them in Davos last week. I tell you what, Al Gore was the craziest by far there, and I'll get to him in a second. But it did actually start with John Kerry in this typical clueless way, uh, totally not self-aware, Underlining to the gathered elite just how elite this bunch at Davos really is. Getting off, in his case at least, on being planet savers. It's pretty extraordinary that we select group of human beings because of whatever touched us at some point in our lives are able to sit in a room and come together and uh, actually talk about saving the planet. Now, the fact, of course, that these planet savers, this uh, extraterrestrial elite that's being touched, it doesn't walk the walk. It's like they reckon that cutting our emissions is just for the little people. 10% uh, of them flew into the last Davos meeting by private jet and doesn't seem much different this year. They take a private jet to one of the airfields we visited earlier, either in San Moritz or more likely in Altenheim. But of course, that means there's still the hour or so drive. That's too much for these busy people. So they hop in a VIP helicopter and get brought straight here to this high security helipad on the outskirts of Davos itself. And, and it actually seems that even, even the Davos crowd are kind of getting sick now of being yelled at by Greta Thunberg. I mean, that kind of will happen. I mean, if you're a billionaire or a world leader or a tycoon, there's only so many times you want to be screamed at by a teenager before you start thumping the table yourself. But anyway, Thunberg this year was frozen out, almost literally, in the snow outside. We should just yell insults at them for not making the rest of us stop flying or driving or eating meat or whatever. Why don't we eat more insects? I don't know. But then, then, as if that didn't show the change of temperature, almost literally, for a big finish, along came Al Gore, the former US Vice President, who later won an Oscar for frightening generations of children with his film An Inconvenient Truth. That's back in 2007 on how global warming was going to destroy us. And 16 years later in Davos, Gore actually turned out to be even more shrill and shouty and plum crazy about global warming, telling a pack of lies or, should I say, wild untruths and gross gross exaggerations. 
That's what's boiling the oceans, creating these atmospheric rivers and the rain bombs and sucking the moisture out of the land and creating the droughts and melting the ice and raising the sea level and causing these waves of climate refugees predicted to reach one billion in this century. Look at the xenophobia and political authoritarian trends that have come from just a few million refugees. What about a billion? How crazy is Al Gore these days? I mean, oceans are boiling. Uh, where? Where? I mean, there's a lie right from the start. Boiling oceans. Rain bombs. I mean, can we cut it at last with all this apocalyptic language? And a billion climate refugees. I mean, that's one in eight people on the planet. Yeah, there's, there's the media there and the, and the people... Uh, at this meeting, nodding along, hmm, makes sense, you know, yep, 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 a billion of us will be fleeing our homes from, I don't know, monster hurricanes, uh, rising seas, uh, biblical droughts. I mean, seriously, does anyone with even half a brain believe this stuff? In fact, world grain crops have set fresh records in the past decade. That's more food and that's got to be good. Our chances of dying in a climate catastrophe has never, ever been lower. Why didn't people in this audience tell Al Gore he was nuts? Then again, I wonder, maybe maybe they did. Maybe they sort of let him know in one way or another. Because all that shouting from Al Gore suggests that even he realises he's losing his audience, even at Davos. And Al Gore is actually being laughed at in the US media. But for me, the wonder is why people didn't see through Gore years ago. I mean, this film of his, of Inconvenient Truth in 2007, how many kids were forced to sit through it? How many even believed it? That was already so full of falsehoods and exaggerations right from the get-go. I mean, Gore claimed back then the polar bears were dying out from global warming, or in fact, have increased. He claimed we already had climate refugees from global warming fleeing from Pacific Islands to New Zealand. And again, that was false because there's being not one of them, to this day. Gore also showed scary shots of cities drowning in what seemed to be the near future and warned that Hurricane Katrina back then was a warning of more hurricanes and cyclones to come. And in fact, though, we have seen fewer hurricanes and cyclones, not more. And most low-lying islands in the Pacific are growing or stable. They're not shrinking. And that's the problem with this global warming scare now, because if you keep making these wild predictions, these dud claims long enough, you'll get found out. You'll get found out. Nature will find a way to laugh at you and people will finally figure out that you're a fake, pushing fake scares by making fake predictions again, like this one. This is Mount Kilimanjaro more than 30 years ago. Within the decade, there will be no more snows of Kilimanjaro. That was Gore in 2007. False again, you see, because here's someone hiking up Kilimanjaro just last year past lots of snow. Lots of snow. And look, there is no doubt there has been a little warming over the past 150 years. How much of that is caused by humans? It's still up for some debate. And whether it's bad for us or actually good, well, that is very much an open question. For a start, I mean, more people actually die in cold and heat, a warming world, is probably healthier. And what's really hurting people right now is not global warming, but the plans of the elite to supposedly stop it. That is hurting us much more. You see your power bills go up, your gas price go up, you run short of electricity, as we've seen in California, in Britain, in Europe. And so in Davos last week, we started to see that even the elites are losing interest, apart from the ones that as you just saw, look absolutely deranged. Why would you believe a single one of them?